Welcome to the series, Employee Health Services, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Employee Health is a section in the City of Albuquerque's Risk Management Division. Its mission is to promote a sense of community and increase wellness among city employees and their families by providing education and counseling about physical and mental health. And now, Mind, Body, and Spirit with Dr. Julia Bain. Hi, this is Dr. Julia Bain, and welcome to Mind, Body, and Spirit. And we have an extremely important guest today that we're going to talk to, the Inspector General for the City of Albuquerque, Neftali, and I'm going to let you say your last name. Carrasquillo. Touch Junior. me, touch me. Hi. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. You've been with the city um, for a while, and we are going to talk about how you help the mayor with his value and all of our values really of uh, transparency for the public to be able to look and see the city and know that we are doing everything we can to fight corruption, fraud, any kind of stealing bad goings on and you are in charge of making sure that doesn't happen. That is correct. Nice. I'm so glad you're here and we were talking earlier about how your title is inspector but you're really an investigator. And uh, we're going to talk about that. But first, why don't you tell the audience, as Inspector General, what is your mission? The mission of the Inspector General for the City of Albuquerque is to promote a culture of accountability, integrity, and transparency for the city to ensure that we preserve the public trust and that the city employees, the citizens of Albuquerque, trust that whatever the, to sit their officials in the city are doing is correct. Nice. And we were talking earlier, too, about how you're not just a yes man. I mean, you know, you work for the mayor because you are a city employee, but you are separate from the mayor's office. You are your own entity. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, technically, I don't work for the, for the mayor. Okay. I'm independent, truly independent. You so work for the public. I work for the citizens of Albuquerque. Nice. That's correct. Perfect. Um, I get paid by the city. Okay. But I'm independent. Um, I report to an independent committee. Uh -huh. um, so I'm not part of the le legislative branch or the executive branch of the city. What committee do you report to? The committee's name is the Accountability and Government Oversight Committee. That's a five-member citizen member committee, and I take direction from them. Wow. How does the citizen, citizen get to be on that committee? They're alternately appointed by the mayor and city council, depending on vacancies. And wasn't it our city council that ultimately said, we want you to be our inspector general? And they were the deciding body in my selection, yes. Nice. Where did you come from? Who are you? <laughs> I am recently retired. I retired July, 11th, uh, July 8th from the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. So I was a federal law enforcement agent officer for 24 years. Wow. Okay, so you have a very broad, um, intense, serious background when it comes to investigation. I believe I do. I believe you do too. We're so fortunate to have you. I'm glad to be here, truly. W wonderful. Okay, so you told us what your uh, mission is. What is your vision for the city of Albuquerque in terms of um, how, if in a perfect world, what would we look like? Well, in a perfect world for the city, uh, you wouldn't need someone like me because everything would be done up to par, um, no corruption, no hanky-panky, so to speak. So you wouldn't need someone like me. But since we don't live in a perfect world, um, sometimes there is a need for someone like me. Nice. Because unfortunately, not everybody values honesty, trust, accountability. Um, those are all values that not everybody has. Yeah, not every do everyone does. Thankfully, there, there's not a lot of people like that. Uh -huh. For the most part, peop most people do value those, uh -huh. those kind of things. But you investigate the people who don't. Correct. And those people, they're not, they're city employees, potentially. Could, could be. Could be, could be people who contract with the city. Correct. Could be, who else? City officials, you know, that 
My mandate is all city officials, employees, contractors, anyone doing business with the city. So potentially that could be members of the city council, that could be the mayor and his, his staff, it could be employees, department heads, contractors, vendors, people of that such. So that expression, keep your eyes on the prize, your prize is anybody who is not doing right by the public. Um, correct. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's fabulous. Um, how can people contact you? Like, can you give me an example of, of why somebody might pick up the phone? And let's go ahead and say the number because I want the number on the screen several times during the program so people know how to get a, a hold of you because you have a 24-hour hotline. Correct. Um, what is your number? It's 768-ESA1, which is 3721. And there's, there's two other ways that the public or citizens or employees can, can contact my office. Okay. One is they can go and send us an email, and that's e ESA at CABQ.gov, or they can go to our website, which is www.cabq.gov uh -huh. forward slash Inspector General. Okay. And they can visit our website, and there's some useful information. There's a tip reporting form that they can also utilize to, to contact us as well. Nice. Now, is it like, uh, c c do people, can they report things anonymously um, so they don't fear retaliation? How does that work? How can people call and feel safe calling? They can um, do it anonymously, um, but when they do that, if we need to contact them, it makes it difficult if we don't know who to contact. Oh, yeah. Um, we have a whistleblower policy ordinance okay. where if you are an employee um, and you see some wrongdoing, um, either in a department or in a government or city function, right. you can come and, you know, under the protection of the whistleblower. And right. That protects you from retaliation or discipline from your employer, so to speak. Right, right. And that policy was created um, to send out a message to city employees. Please let us know. Tell us. We want to know. Um, we will protect you the, to the best of our ability. Yeah, and, that, and that's part of... Um, the current mayor, Mayor Berry's um, vision as well with the previous IG, he, he developed this ESA, you know, Efficiency Stewardship Accountability Program where kind of want employees to either come forward with mm -hmm. things that they see could help the city, mm -hmm. you know, save money, or yes. if there's wrongdoing, to, to, to report that as well because it's really every employees responsibility indeed to report those kinds of things because indeed my office we can't work if we don't know what's going on and the only mm. way that we know what's going on is if some employee some citizen takes it upon themselves to see what's that there is something going uh -huh. wrong and they tell us do the right thing do the right thing do the right thing it even says i noticed on the bottom of your um flyer which by the by, you can call and get a copy of this if you would like this flyer. It's very well done, by yes, the way. Thank you. Um, help promote the greater good of the city of Albuquerque. And on the bottom it says, um, remember, the OIG cannot put a stop to fraudulent activity and misconduct without knowing of it occurring. That's so correct. you can't take action if you don't know what's going on. So you are, are the eyes and ears. Yeah, we, we consider ourselves and when I say we it's not just me I have two other investigators that help me promote our oh, cause and our mission good um, we consider ourselves caretakers guardians of city activities you know we're we're the conscience for for the citizens of Albuquerque because they're the ones that pay the taxes they pay our salaries and they expect something in return for for those taxes and so we make sure that whatever services are provided are done with the best intentions, efficient use of the monies, that it's not wasted. And you didn't think you had a guardian angel. <laughs> right? All right, well, um, hopefully I am that guardian angel. I know. I think you are. I mean, just, I, I'm thrilled that you're here. Um, also on this flyer, it talks about prevent and detect fraud, waste, and abuse in city activities, including all city contracts and partnerships. Um, do you call the police department? Do you work with the chief? Do you work with APD um, together? Yes. If, 
in the course of an investigation, we um, discover that either an employee, a contractor, or a vendor is involved in some kind of criminal activity or criminal intention, since I don't have law enforcement powers, I'm required to notify a prosecuting agency, which in this case, for the most part, is going to be the Albuquerque Police Department. Okay. And so I have met with the police chief on several occasions. Good. And we discuss resources and utilize mm -hmm. resources. So he's agreed and committed to support us, uh -huh. and we will support them as well. We're all we're all on the same team. We are. We're here to we serve are. the public. We're here to be a positive, productive reflection on the mayor. And um, we're not fooling around. You know, this is serious business running the city. This is serious business. It's, it's a big endeavor. It is. It is. We take care of a lot of people, and we feel, and I feel, personally feel proud to be a part of it. So do I. Nice. Right, so we're on the same page. We are. Okay, so. Um, oh, I was asking you about the state, uh, the state of New Mexico. Do they have an IG as far as you know? or As far as I know, there is a an inspector general for the state. I believe he works for the Human Services Division. Uh -huh. um, but you haven't met him? No, no. We recently got uh, an investigator that worked in that department, so she's on board with us now. Oh, nice. Yep. You have a female investigator. We do. Cool. Yes. Okay, now do you all have like badges, guns, all that, like the APD, or are you more just kind of like, I'm just going to slip in and so you don't notice me? Well, I don't know that when we slip in, <laughs> we're, we're not noticed because, you know, Inspector General, you know, kind of scares people. We, we hope that we can dissolve, you know, get rid of that persona or that, re that reputation because we're, you know, I'm going to say something that's going to sound funny, but, you know, we are the government, and in this case, we, we are here to, to help. Um, so when we show up, it's not, you know, maybe some, as a result of some wrongdoing, but, I mean, we're there to, to, to hopefully fix the problem. And like you said earlier, which I really liked this line, we're, you're here to make things right. Yes. You know, so it's not like if somebody sees you walking into a government building, they have to say, oh, no, it's time to be paranoid. It's more like the response and the reaction needs to be, good, he's here. Right. Well, and, and, and my job is not only to point out bad things. Sometimes, you know, part of my job and part of my mandate is to, you know, give recommendations of how we see things could be done better. You know, that now our, you know, recommendations aren't binding, you know, the city administration, department heads don't have to take our recommendations, but when we give recommendations, they're well thought out and done for good reason. And, you know, we'd like for the department head to take them, but they're not required to. Wow. Okay. So you are, it's almost like you're our consulting firm. For, for everybody in the city and outside of the city, you are a prepaid consultant, which is how I refer to myself sometimes when I talk about what I do for a living, but you kind of do that too. Yeah, in a loose kind of way, yes. In a loose kind of way. Okay, what do you want the public to know about who you are and what you do? Personally or in my profession? Oh, let's go, let's do both. Well, I'll, personally, I'll give, I'll give an answer or respond to that question the way I did when I was interviewed by, by the city council. Okay, great. Because usually when someone asks someone to, to talk about themselves or tell you about themselves, they go into the professional things, you know, where they've been, what they've done. And, and um, that, that's nice, and I can do that, but that doesn't tell you who I am. And what I usually like to do is say that, you know, I'm, I'm a product of two humble, two humble parents. You know, my, my father, who is my hero, um, came from Puerto Rico, Third, nice. with only a third grade education, not knowing the language, only spoke Spanish. Wow. Worked hard, two jobs his entire life to provide the best he could for his family. And what he taught me was the meaning of hard work and working hard. And that's what I tried to do. My mother, very proud of reaching high school education. Um, she taught me mm -hmm. that education was extremely important. So that's why I I have a bachelor's degree and I have two master's degrees. I have a master's degree in criminal justice and a master's degree in public administration. 
I also have seven professional certifications, so, and most of them are investigations, interviewing, and security. My mother also taught me a very important lesson, and you said it a couple of times, doing what's right. My mother always taught me to always do what's right, even when someone is not looking. Because most people, <laughs> when they know they're being watched, they're going to do the right thing. Uh -huh. But uh, tell somebody's character if they always do it when no one's watching. So that's, that's what I try to instill in, in myself, my family, and the people that work for me. That's, so that's, that's my core, that's my foundation, and that's what I've built my career on. Wow, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. You're welcome. I appreciate that. It, it tells, I think it tells us all a lot about who you are. That is who I am. Yeah, I, I, I personally think you're, I think the city council uh, made a wise choice. I, you know, you're qualified personally and professionally, certainly. I, w I would agree with that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> you think they made the right choice in giving you the job? I certainly do. Uh -huh, and nice. I hope to prove them correct every day. Excellent. Why, maybe you could just talk to us about how, how would you go about conducting an investigation? I mean, what do you do? Well, it's, um, investigation is what, I, is what I've done for 24 years. Uh -huh. um, I personally think I'm extremely good at it. Um, nice. Investigation is, is a puzzle. And you have to find the pieces of the puzzle and, and fit them together and tell the story. And, uh, you know, once we get information that there's something amiss, we go out and we talk to people. Investigation is a lot of dialoguing with people. Okay. And as an investigator, you, you do two things probably 95% of the time, and you have to be good at both of them to be successful. And that is interviewing, so talking to people, you know, establishing rapport, trying to get someone that doesn't want to tell you something to tell you it. Mm -hmm. um, that's not easy. And then the other thing is telling the story. You have to put your facts on a piece of paper that one is believable and credible and convinces someone that what you're telling them happened actually happened. And then once that's done, it's reported. And then if it it's involves a department-type function, then it's up to the director of that department, once they receive my report of an investigation, to take the actions that, that they need to. I don't... The IG does not get involved in, in disciplinary type actions. We don't recommend okay. or we don't influence. Okay. We don't do any of that stuff. That's a HR function that we remove ourselves from. We just report the facts. Okay, good. Um, that's good to know. So you part of what you do also is to investigate a claim. You don't just take something to face value. You investigate. Correct. And how do you do that? Again, uncovering, you know, Talking to people, uncovering the facts, getting documentation. Um, sometimes we, and I have the power to administer an oath, which takes on a, a more of an importance when you talk to somebody because we can talk and I can ask you a question and it's up to you whether you want to tell me honestly or not. But if I administer an oath, then there's the other element to it that if, if it's found out later that you've lied, then there's some criminal sanctions that, that attach to that as well. So, so it kind of lends oh, more of an importance to, to yes. talking to people. Yes. I have the, the ability to subpoena, you know, either witnesses or documents. I can compel people to cooperate. I mean, if you're a city employee, a contractor, or a vendor doing business with the city, uh -huh. you, you have an obligation to cooperate. Uh -huh. But as an IG with those things that I just mentioned, it, it, it lends it a bit, little bit more credibility. And the fact that it could lead to criminal prosecution at a later date if there's criminality involved lends a little bit more importance as well. So if somebody lies to you, is that like perjury? It is. Wow. Wow. That is great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate having that kind of uh, tool in your toolbox. It, it, it's helpful. It's helpful because, again, some, not everyone is prone to lying, but when they're scared, um, when their job may be on the line, um, they may not be wholeheartedly truthful. And the fact that, you know, once you ask them to raise their, their hand and you yes. swear or affirm that what they're going to tell me is the truth, that, that makes them think twice. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And, and have you done that a few times since you've been with the city? 
Um, the vast majority of investigate, well, all the investigations that we've done, and we've already done um, more investigations in my brief time here than any previous IG, um, which I'm proud of because it shows that I'm, you know, very aggressive and I, uh -huh. I, I do take my job seriously. Uh -huh. um, it's policy in my office that um, when we talk, when we interview people, we, we do two things. We first administer an oath. That's it's going to happen, whether you are someone we're very interested in talking to or you're just a, a witness. Um, we're going to administer an oath. And the other thing we do is we tape all our interviews. Um, taping interviews is beneficial in that it allows me to have and develop a relationship, a rapport with you, because I'm looking at you instead of, you know, asking you a question and writing down notes. Sometimes right. when you're doing that, you tend to miss things. So. Right. I engage in a conversation and I have to worry about notes because uh -huh. I have a tape recorder that's going to mm -hmm. remind me of everything that we discussed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> you are cool. Um, you know, with your criminal justice education, with your um, public administration, I mean, did you ever think in terms of your career that you would arrive at this spot? Because you've, you, I mean, it's it's almost like you've been readying yourself to get here. Not really. <laughs> uh, I retired. I always thought that when I retired, I was gonna, you know, drift away on some beach in the sand. And but uh, you know, things being the way they are, um, I decided to start a new chapter in my career, and this opportunity arose. And it was interesting. It fit. Uh -huh what I can offer and uh -huh. it was a happy marriage and hopefully it's a long lasting <laughs> marriage. Uh, absolutely, without a doubt. What's your phone number again? What's the 24 hour tip line again? 768-3721. 768-3721. Um, like I've said on my program many times um, to the public because sometimes I think people go into the, this myth in their head that they're alone and you're not alone. You're not alone. We're here to help you, um, no matter what. Uh, we've got 911, we've got 311, and we have an inspector general who will investigate, um, who will substantiate, who will follow through, who will make sure that if you report waste, corruption, any kind of hanky-panky, any kind of carrying on, this gentleman is going to look into it for you. That's my job. That's your job. Well, listen, um, Inspector, we only have a couple of minutes left. I, what would you like to leave the audience with in terms of um, who you are, what you do, um, why, and why is it important to use you? Why, is, why do we all need to value your presence and your role and your work here with the city? The Inspector General Office is utilized correctly is a very powerful and important tool for any entity that, that has it, whether it's city government, federal government, school board, whatever. Um, and it's utilized to ferret out the things that typically um, maybe police departments and sheriff's offices don't have the resources okay. to do. Mm -hmm. Because we are a city employee and we are a a function of the city, then that's our mandate. It's not to look at domestic violence, it's not to look at auto theft, it's to protect the taxpayer dollars. And so that's our role and that's it's an important mandate, it's an important function and so like you said, city employees that feel helpless, they, they're in a bad situation or they see something wrong um, and they may not want to go to a police department because in reality, that may not be the right venue to go to. Mm -hmm. If there is an inspector general, that's where they should go. Mm -hmm. And it starts with them taking the initiative to take that action. Because if they know it and keep it to themselves, then they're going to const you know, constantly complain, and their complaints go nowhere. Right. At least if they complain to us, you know, there is an opportunity for us to look at it. And if it, if, if it bears fruit, because not everything is going to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, not everything will rise to a, a level where action can be taken. But, you right. know, I, I can guarantee that I will listen 
And I will tell you right right up front whether there's something that I can do or not. Okay. Um, which is, you know, that's also my job is to be honest and be frank with, with people, not to, you know, dangle a carrot stick and lead them astray, so to speak. Well, I certainly appreciate you being so direct and and clear with me. This has been extremely enlightening, and I appreciate you coming on my program. I appreciate the opportunity. And I appreciate the fact that you um, have taken so seriously that when there is a report of abuse, waste, fraud, corruption, lying, cheating, stealing, anything that involves the city of Albuquerque, you will investigate and you will take action. That is correct. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, good luck in your hard work. Thank you. And I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Remember, you are not alone with any kind of information or knowledge you may have regarding uh, abuse, corruption, uh, if you uh, fraud, we are guardians of your money. You are taxpayers. Uh, you are employees, and we're here to help. You're never alone. This is Dr. Julia Bain. Until next time, be happy and be well. This has been Employee Health Services Mind, Body, and Spirit. For more information, call the City of Albuquerque's Employee Health Services at 768-4613. Let the Employee Health Services staff let you be your best at work, at home, and at play.